everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory. It's Leonard Fournette's Jaguars going up against Hyde's 49ers. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the home of Super Bowl 50, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Josh Lambeau now ready to put this one in the air. And we are underway from Santa Clara. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. C.J. Beathard bringing out the San Francisco 49ers. They're coming off a 33-10 defeat to Philadelphia last week. You called that game. Well, Beathard not his best game. And now Garoppolo coming in. So we'll see what happens at the QB spot. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a change in this first week. But I would expect a change after that They're Jimmy, so that Jimmy Garoppolo takes over the starting position. I think with C.J. Beathard, a rookie out of Iowa, does a lot of good things, calm, cool, collected. Very inaccurate in the last game against Philadelphia. Had a chance to make some completions for first downs, but threw the ball behind receivers. They'll give Jimmy Garoppolo every chance to be the future quarterback for San Francisco. To throw is Beathard. And some room to maneuver. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll bring up a second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Second down to the offense needing five yards. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. To throw is Beathard. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away and that brings up fourth down. Trust me, Brandon, I'm not about to try and take your job. I can't do what you do. But that wasn't just three and out. That felt like three and backwards. That's exactly what it was. Uh, you can have my job whenever you want it. Uh, the drive that you're looking for, though, probably going forward, bad start to the ball game. Yeah, not the way to get things going. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. Oh, look at that. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They'll be let out by their quarterback from Central Florida. It's Blake Bortles. And partner, this is a young man who's got it all. Big, strong arm, strong-legged runner when he decides to take off with the football. But it hasn't all come together for him because he's thrown way too many interceptions in his career. Has to take care of the ball better because when he does that, 
he can be one of the better starting quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, to your point, in three years, 51 interceptions. He's also fumbled 29 times. Rookie first rounder from LSU. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Now the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. The reputation of Chris Ivory as a running back is well deserved. Hard charging player. Hardly ever knocked back at the point of attack. Usually finishes all of his runs going forward. A very dependable player that teams like because he can set a tone in the running game and with his physical play inside. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Here we go now. They'll run it again with four and a half. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. So we've reached the end of a fairly even first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. We're back to Santa Clara after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They'll come up on a third and four here to start things out. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. False start, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still third down. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. From the gun, it's Bortles. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. This is taken around the 12. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he'll be out of bounds, getting it across the 25. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. You know, San Francisco, Charles, is, is a comeback out for offense. Yes, they're 0-8. First time that they've started like that in franchise history. But let's remember, five straight losses by three points or fewer, and you feel like they're starting to build something, don't you? I do. I think that the front office has come together and is drafting better. I think they're doing a better job in free agency. I think that they have a cohesive unit between owner, general manager, and head coach, and the proper vision that all three of them share. The, the tough part is what you'd mentioned, five straight losses by three points or less, and the head coach is like, okay, Kyle Shanahan's like, enough of this, all right? No more attaboys for getting close. They were like the few attaboys the last two weeks, though, because Dallas and Philadelphia, they routed them. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Malik Jackson with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack.
Back to throw Bethard. Got his target, Pierre Garçon. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. They'll throw here, Bethard. And a big loss here as he's taken down. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 23. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> First and ten, here's Bortles. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Second down, just one yard to go. Shotgun now for Bortles. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Portals to throw on third and one. But he's got it to Hearns. A great effort there to shed the contact. And it helps him pick up the first. Bortles on the hook up to Hearns for the Jaguar first down. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Now a signal and a timeout call. As it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play.
And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. and We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Second down following the run. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. A final shot before half for Bortles. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. Here we go now. Three, 90. Three, hot, hot. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So we've hit halftime here in what obviously is a very fast-moving first half of play. As we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report, here's Larry Ridley. Thanks, guys, and welcome, everyone, to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the scoreless first half of play. Defense has been the name of the game. It's not often you see a matchup where both sides can't find a way to get on the scoreboard. We'll have to see if the offense picks up in the second half. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Jackson is going to push his way to the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Continuing on the drive, defense will win the battle and get the sack. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Jaguars now late in the second quarter. Portals on the mark to Allen Hearns. And he ends up at the 49-yard line before he stopped on the play. Thank you, Mr. Ridley. A scoreless first half, and now we're set for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. There are zero points on the scoreboard for either side. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments were made. The defenses have obviously been great. So if you like defense, this is a classic game. This is what you're looking for. 
but now you're trying to figure out how to gain any type of an advantage on offense. Is it through a big chunk play that they haven't seen before, or is it just running your regular offense and running it better, trying to create an opportunity? Well, let's see which avenue they choose to go down. Second half beginning with a run from Fournette. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. And that's another stop for the defense. Something we've seen all game long. They've been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. minute now of the third quarter. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. Looking left side. He's got it complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. The Jags picking up the first down there. A gain of 12. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Fresh set of downs here. They go play action here on first down. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. And it's second down. And on second and ten now. This is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. Try to lay one up deep. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep ball with the clock running down. But to no avail as time will expire on this third quarter of play. Back now here in Santa Clara. As we've got the final quarter upon us, we get ready to start the fourth. Here's Brad Nortman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. The 
the San Francisco offense getting their last minute instructions before they take over here. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. So a tie game as we start to really watch the clock here. The offense has a long way to go to try to get into the kicker's range for three. Now Beathard. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. And he is out of bounds, getting it just shy of the 35. A very solid gain of 27. Coverage. He was blanketed. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down. Take the completion, keep moving. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here we go now. Blue landed. Blue landed. Here's Beathard to throw. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. the play fake he'll look to throw good one able to haul it in and he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds it goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains a little football 101 there you just see the receiver try to run down the defender meaning he goes right at it and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch So the offense has it first and 10. All right, here we go. They're going to look to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. This pass rush, they've been excellent all game long, and another example of it right there in the closing moment. Not only with the pass rush, but how well they're coached, because if you don't quite get there, get to the quarterback, get your hands up into the passing lane and knock it away, as we just saw there. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll go down shy of 40 at the 41. Give him eight on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Looking to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
Here's Bradley Pinion now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Jags. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. So just about a minute to go here, tie ball game. As fans, we love free football, but the guys in the field don't. They're going to attack and go for the win right now. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. First down now, but that clock rolling. Bortles to throw. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Clock running as Bortles hurries to try to get his guys set. Now Bortles throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him, all focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. To throw his Bortles. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The rookie from Stanford, Solomon Thomas. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. Partner, you absolutely cannot take a sack in that situation. Now, it's also fourth down. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. Nothing between these two teams for four quarters. Here we go to begin overtime. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. The results for them so far, not that great. Well... Not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet, you're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And now running right through it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I think we saw some of the best qualities of Carlos Hyde on that run. Able to pick up something there, being physical running the football. But I think he's got really good vision and great feet. He's going to be the key to this offense really being revitalized.
So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Now a first throw here in overtime. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. So the defense gets to the quarterback. Now the offense backed up on second down. Handoff comes to Hyde. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Calling no gain there, and it brings forth a third and long. The Niners on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 14. To throw is Beathard. And this is going to be incomplete. Another nice job there defensively. They've really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face, good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And this will be taken at the 13. 51 yards on the punt there. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Time for Bortles. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. And with just two seconds remaining, the timeout is called here at OT. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. here on first down completes it left side to the tight end Lewis and he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44 
Fournette, a first down carry. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. From the gun, it's Bortles. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The running back, Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Second down, here's Fournette. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now Bortles. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Bortles will try again on second down. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Here we go now. 390. 390. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here we go. Blue, 
Again, it's Fournette. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. on the give to Fournette. And he is in for the score! And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime. A little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Yeah, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gaughan, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long from Santa Clara.